the worst way to support Israel, Christian Apocalypse Edition. <laughs> okay. <laughs> U.S. evangelical support for Israel has intertwined deep-seated theological beliefs with the geopolitics of the Middle East. Following the lethal October 7th attack by Hamas on Israel, evangelical groups like Christians United for Israel swiftly supported Israel's right to self-defense, guided by a quote-unquote dispensational premillennialist theology. This doctrine sees the gathering of Jews in Israel as a prelude to the end times marked by Armageddon in Jesus Christ's second coming a belief which gives the current conflict eschatological importance. Eschatological importance. Evangelical circles resonate with sentiments of prophetic fulfillment, as noted by historian Daniel Hummel. This war is seen as, quote-unquote, prophetically significant within these circles, which fervently cite scriptures as legitimizing Israel's responses. A direct quote from Christians United for Israel, quote, to the terrorists who have chosen this fight, hear this, what you do to Israel, God will do to you, illustrates the intensity of this conflict. The blend of religious prophecy and foreign policy is evident, showing how faith-driven views can significantly impact U.S. foreign policy attitudes and decisions. So... I thought this would be very interesting to talk about. So Armin, I think you, can you please provide more of the background belief behind what's going on here? Because this is something that is more pronounced in evangelical U.S. communities. I, growing up Catholic, this wasn't something I was ever really exposed to and surrounded by. This is, this is much more of a mm. Protestant evangelical thing. But for someone who doesn't know, how would you explain what the belief is? and why it's so bad <laughs> and so the summary of it is they want the jews to kill the muslims so jesus could come and kill the jews that's a short summary mm. of it. um youtube these are not our beliefs oh. this is the yes. prophetic beliefs of other people um, we think that is horrible and stupid and actually why we're talking about this because it needs to be condemned. Okay, explain more. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, a lot of evangelicals think that the, second, the, the third temple, if it's built, um, you know, the, the, the temple was destroyed twice, one, once by the Babylonians and the second time by the Romans. And now they're going to try to rebuild it the third time. But the problem is that the Dome of the Rock has been built on top of that by the in, by the Umayyad, uh, the Islamic Umayyad dynasty. So it's right built right where the Temple of the Jews were. So the only way the temple could be rebuilt for Jesus to come back is for the Dome of the Rock and Masjid al-Aqsa to be just destroyed. And if you think about it, that will not happen unless something very significant happens in Israel and the Middle East, right? If you, I mean, if you read, for, forget about the fact that this is all nonsense, but think about if the premises are true, that you need to build the temple for Jesus to come back. And for that temple to be built, the Dome of the Rock, which is, a, the, you know, and the Masjid al-Aqsa needs to be destroyed, which is like... A, the third most holiest place for Muslims. So after that, if you want to think about it, if you accept those premises, if you want to think about it rationally, right now, the political situation in Israel um, is not at all in a way that that could ever happen. So the only way that could happen is by a major conflict, a, a crazy amount of conflict for Israel to get to a point where they just like bulldoze through that entire thing. And this is why religion here is so extremely dangerous because, uh, because th that view will get you to the point where you want more conflict. When you want more, you basically welcome war. You welcome more conflict. And this is, and this is very dangerous because these evangelicals are a major mar part of the American electorate, which have a major influence in American foreign policy. And imagine 
having the superpower of the world, having um, having a lot of us, you know, electorate voting in a way that promotes more chaos. That is extremely dangerous. And this is why religion, um, you know, I say Christianity, don't underestimate how destructive Christianity is when it comes to world politics. And I support Israel. But this is this is the worst, as Susanna mentioned, this is the worst way of supporting Israel because it's not even you're not even supporting Israel for the sake of Israelis. You are just trying to get them to do something so that your prophecy come true and your prophecy then involves them being destroyed by the armies of Jesus, you know, because. You're like, I you're know, like, it's Yay. Like actually What's so that? anti-Semitic because my understanding yeah. is that they want basically, I don't know exactly if it's all the Jews or just a majority of the Jews to return to Israel because once the Jews are back in Israel, then it'll start basically a clock on a seven, like a seven year clock. And then that's when Jesus will start to come back and then they'll fight the Antichrist for a while. And then Jesus will establish right. his kingdom on earth that will be unending. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that's so that's basically t them telling uh, is like when they say "Yay Israel, Yay Jews," they're like that means that you you have to see how dark that is because you're just using them to get to a place where eventually they become the victim of this. So it's it's just so bizarre. So not not all support for Israel is the same. Like when we support Israel because we support. Uh, we want maximum well-being for the people who live there, the people who live in Israel and Palestine, right? This is what we want. Um, but if 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 your worldview prioritizes your prophecy coming true over people's lives, you can see that, you know, and also, and this is also the very, this support for Israel is very dangerous for Israel. Like, I, this is why you have to choose your fr friends very carefully. Because what Israel needs eventually is stability. But if your main supporters are encouraging you and funding you um, to have more chaos and more war, that is going to, you know, like r right now, the United States, fortunately, is trying to move, uh, push Israel to move to a position where it has peace um, and pr with its neighbors, with, with Arab countries. Like they have the Abrahamic Accord. Like they have this, if, one of the very few things that Trump, I think, did good was to start the Abrahamic Accords, right? And Biden administration continued that, you know, because of what they agreed with how important that is. And that will bring peace. Like, that was a way for, for you to have some normalized relationship between Israel and Arab countries and, you know, peace and stability in the Middle East. And that that is against what these evangelicals want. So, again, so here, see... What is good for Israelis is against what these evangelicals want, because that will mean if you if you if you normalize the relationship between Israel and other Arab countries, this this there, there wouldn't be enough chaos for them to eventually destroy the the, the dome of the rock and Masjid al Aqsa, right? So yeah, the, yeah. But by the way, this is why the uh, October seventh attack was so much more destructive beyond just the uh, people who kill were killed in during those attacks because as as horrible as those um killings were the this the cost of that attack goes way beyond the people who died that day because now the normalization of relationships between uh, Israel and the other countries is now well, just particularly got a major hit. Saudi Arabia most important yes. Saudi Arabia and that's yeah, exactly yeah, yeah. what the Islamic and, Republic of Iran wanted. That is exactly what the Islamic Republic wanted. Yes, that was the whole attack was designed to do exactly that. And it achieved that, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, this is that was how... a question I had for you. Like what I that's one piece that I haven't been tracking very actively right now. What 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 is like the for lack of a better term, the status of that? What did, what are what are what are Saudi relationships looking like right now? So Saudi Arabia really, really hates this whole Palestine issue, and they're trying to go around it as soon as possible, right? But they can't because their people care. The people of Saudi Arabia care about Palestine, um, um, and they're anti-Jewish, 
so they can, and Saudi Arabia is, af- is very much afraid of uh, Islamic revolution happening within its, within Saudi Arabia and toppling the government. So they have to they have to try to get as many um, points from Israel when it comes to the Palestinian issue as as they possibly can before they normalize relationship with Israel. Uh, which is actually good for Israel if they do that, because we we want Palestine to eventually be a country, and maybe them, maybe Israel will give in to more, give in more, give the Palestinians eventually what they need, because that's what the conditions for normalization with uh, Saudi Arabia is going to be, right? Um, so that would be good, but again, Saudi Arabia probably is just seeing this as a delay of the project. Sa- Saudi Arabia needs normalization of relationships with Israel for its survival as well. So this is why Saudi Arabia right now is stuck between a rock and a hard place because it needs not to piss off its a radical, um, the, the radical p- part of its um, civilians as for it to not start an Islamic revolution for its survival, but it also needs normalization with Israel for a survival, it needs both of those. So it has to, it has to manage those very carefully. So this attack has um, the, the Israel defending itself and its reaction in Gaza has made a lot of Muslims angry with Israel, including many uh, Muslims in Saudi Arabia. So Saudi Arabia now has to delay the whole normalization, but it probably will come back to it at some point. It just sees that as a major delay, but. Maybe, maybe at some point Saudi Arabia could be involved in becoming the government in Gaza or like something like that. And, you know, Saudi Arabia could try to show to the Muslim world how effective it's being with being pro-Palestinian by going into Gaza and doing a rebuilding project, like building hospitals, building schools, building, I don't know, mosques maybe so to to appease this population and look and then replacing Hamas maybe there in Gaza as as the manager of that area and then eventually that will bring Saudi Arabia to a point where it's it has done enough for Gaza for people not to hate Saudi Arabia and then go back to normalizing ties with Israel that would that would probably be a, a, a good plan but we'll see we'll see what happens but I just want to mention here when it comes to, to relevant to the story you can see how Hamas and these evangelical Christians want the same thing at the end of the day, because what Israel needs is normalization of relationships and peace. What these Arab countries need is the same thing, but what the Hamas and the Islamic Republic wants is more chaos in the Middle East. And these evangelical Christians also want the same thing. They want, they are, they're not technically, they say they support Israel, but what they want is for Israel to just crush the you know Arabs and destroy them and just basically destroy again and, and Israel is never going to do that unless it gets a lot more radical and there's a lot more war there. So basically, these evangelical Christians are there. They act like they're anti-Hamas, but what they want is more in line with what Hamas wants as well. Hamas wants. I know wants, people wants want to talk chaos. about. Yeah, genocide yeah. and ethnic cleansing. That's what these people actually want. Exactly. exactly. More than like what we see. Yeah, come on. Charles is saying, so why isn't Saudi Arabia taking in Palestinian refugees? Because this is something that the, uh, let, for as a generalization, let's say the, the pro-Palestinian media will not tell you, is that Palestine's Arab neighbors don't actually want to take in Palestinian refugees. They don't want that. They don't want it. They don't want it. And why? Because there has been multiple instances across multiple different countries across <laughs> in the past 75 years that have taken in Palestinians in mass, and it has turned their countries inside out. And they've seen the Look result. Look what of happened that. to Lebanon. Look and, what exactly, happened to Lebanon. Lebanon, after, after. Lebanon, Lebanon has never recovered. No. So that's what people are not going to tell you and i'm going to say something and, and, I, and like people are going to maybe be pissed about me saying it because of who i am and my co- the color of my skin all that shit what people are not honest about is that a lot of arabs don't actually like palestinians all that much again i'm making a generalization that definitely is not true for everyone because i know a lot of arabs that aren't palestinians that are very strong supporters personally i know them so 
let me be clear. But there is a lot of anti-Palestinian sentiment in various Arab countries and communities. And I was talking about one of my friends. I was talking to one of my friends about this, and he's Lebanese. And <laughs> for the sake of YouTube, I cannot repeat what his father says about Palestinians. I can't. But the thing is, they just hate Jews more. <laughs> yes, that's what this is so, about. A lot of people, it really makes me angry that a lot of people are not honest about that. They're not honest about how many Arab countries, communities, both domestically and internationally, actually feel about this. And again, I'm talking generally. I don't want to say this is everyone because I know it's not everyone. Um, but people are really not honest about that sentiment. And they just point the finger one way. What what do you think about that, Armin? Am I am I off base? Yep. Yeah. So support for Palestine is not a, a lot of times not really support for Palestinian people. Uh, support for Palestine, a lot of times, and I would actually say most of the times, is anti-Israeli or anti-Jewish hatred, but said in a way that is more acceptable. Right? So Palestinian people are being, Palestinian blood is being used as a weapon by people to express their anti-Semitic views. They don't actually care about Palestinians. They actually, they actually, I would claim that they actually want Palestinians. A lot of people who hold the Palestinian flag or say free Palestine, they genuinely want Palestinians to die so that they could come out and express their anti-Israeli views or anti-Jewish views. So that's why, it, so it, 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 if you're asking why wouldn't they take Palestinian refugees, that would, because that would, that comes with the assumption that they actually care about Palestinian refugees. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's yeah. go to some uh, of the starred comments and super chats. So, mm -hmm. oh, LS420 Stoner. <laughs> what a name. <laughs> it's seen as a former evangelical. I can't wait to hear what she has to say. Yeah, it's a lot to unpack. Um, Secular Sakai also gave someone an Atheist Republic membership. If, if, you, if you're the special person that received the new membership, make sure to use your special emojis. Gaijin American gave a $2 super chat. Thank you, Gaijin. I mean, basically, prophecy fantasy novels taken too far. Yes. Yes. Mm. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Everyone, yeah. I don't know what it is, but Abrahamics have a, uh, a an end of the world death cult fetish. <laughs> um, Zaid is, <clears throat> I thought this was a good comment that I'd like you to respond to, Armin. He's saying, how funny Muslims on the other side are the exact same. They want to fight Israel because in Islam, the judgment day will only come after the big war in which, oops, well, I can't say the end part, in which the Muslims K all the J's. K all the J's, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, this is, wait, can I, sh can I show people that picture that you sent me with that sign? Is that <gasps> that was so that bad? Yes, please show this. Can you zoom in? Because it's not very big for us. So, so yeah, I'm gonna first mention what what this is a one of the pro Palestinian marches, right? No, zoom in. The sign so we can, that, there we go. Thank you. So what does the sign say, Susie? It do says, and this even... is written in English, guys. So you can assume that this is an English speaking country. Now, do you understand why the trees in the rocks will have to speak? Yeah. I don't know if people know what this refers to. Should we, is that, should we explain it or yes. is that YouTube friendly? Yes. Okay. So you have to explain it. There we go. So this is, um, Islamic hadith, and again, this is Sahih, 
Okay, so you can see the reference here, so you can know that I'm not making this up. This is Sahih, this means authentic. This means that this is a fundamental part of Islam. Like there's no, this is Islamic scripture, second only when it comes to being authentic, second and um, second only to the Quran. There's, you cannot remove this from Islam. This is a fundamental part of Islamic teaching, right? So this hadith says, you want to read the hadith? Oh, you're muted. Abu Huraira reported Allah's messenger as saying, the last hour would not come unless the Muslims will fight against the Jews and the Jews would kill them until the Jews would hide themselves behind a stone or a tree and a stone or a tree would say, Muslim or the servant of Allah, there is a Jew behind me, come and kill him. But the, tr the tree Garkhad would not say, for it is the tree of the Jews. So basically, yeah. during the end times, lost... even even the rocks and trees will betray the Jews hiding them, except for the Gerhad tree. It's a G Jewish tree. Yeah, and based anti-fascist tree. <laughs> this is the Jewish tree, apparently, that is not going to betray. But every other tree and rock is going to tell the Muslims that there's a Jew hiding behind me, so come and basically uh, kill him. Again, YouTube, this is not what we're, we're saying. We're against this. We condemn this. But again, Allah's messenger is basically Muhammad, right? So this Muhammad and is saying that this will happen. Yeah. What makes me so upset is that there are people around in the U.S., in the U.K., etc., where they are children who do not go to school anymore wearing the uniforms of their local Jewish schools because they're afraid of their children being attacked. But this woman feels comfortable to openly hold and show her face holding this Nazi sign. Right. This is the state of things. So Jews feel a, compelled a... to hide the fact that they're Jewish as much as they can in public, but this woman feels perfectly safe, validated, and comfortable holding this Nazi sign in public proudly. That's where we are, guys. That's where we are. Yeah. Uh, look at this comment, by the way. Emran is saying... It's funny how you focus on an individual protester being hate motivated. Well, Netanyahu himself has invoked the chosen people and other explicitly genocidal religions, ju religion justifications. It's funny how Imran is saying that right after we covered the news about Christians, Christian evangelical Christians being having genocidal views. So we have been calling out uh, far right views among. Uh, Jewish people in Israel all the time we have done we have for years uh, for ye years for years we have done that so how see how unfair people to uh, are to us we have for years covered that the fascistic takes that some people have in Israel we have covered that we am we have condemned it so on is you you know see how, how unfair the criticism is because this this comment comes right after we are showing you how crazy evangelical christians are when it comes to their support for israel and as soon as we show muslim views that are genocidal they're like oh you're focusing on this one like you do you do you have a memory of goldfish we were just talking about evangelical christians and this is this view is common. What what you're saying here? This is not one person. How stupid do you have to this be? Is to think this is hundreds of thousands. This is millions. Anyways, let's go to the rest of the. <laughs> Come on, as if we haven't talked about how like belief in being the chosen people and all this stuff is super cringe. I think it's the most cringe we called, thing in the world. We called. We called. We get hate from all sides because. We call Judaism fundamentally a racist religion as a whole. The religion as a whole, we called it the racist religion. And we got a lot of hate for that. People, people called us anti-Semitic for that. And then like this, we get this comment. Unbelievable. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know what? It just, you know, this is a little bit of a tangent, but I've, I've been thinking about this a lot the past few days. Like the past month has taught me that 
the Jewish people legitimately do need their own country where they can always return to to be safe and defend themselves. Because at the end of the day, no one is going to defend them except themselves. I've, I believe that without a shadow of a doubt. But for some godforsaken reason, in the 1940s, we decided to put them and this fucking cursed piece of land. This has got to be the most cursed piece of land in the world. Like, I know, oh, we have certain beliefs about this land, blah, 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 and that's why we decided to go there, blah, 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 blah. I feel like if you actually gave a fuck about the Jews, you would put them somewhere safer. Because this is just horrible. What kind of holy land is this? What kind of abominable holy oh, land is this? This was the safest place at the time. Wasn't there some discussion about making, like, a you, Zionist land Uganda. in Africa or something? Yeah, Uganda? Yeah, yeah, it was. Can't yeah, we just yeah, do yeah. that? Because <laughs> this is, well, this I mean, is it, just horrible. It was not feasible. There was already, like, first of all, it's already. this was a place where it wasn't a... A lot of people are like, why did they chose this place? Okay, if, actually, if you go look at why they chose this place, it made a lot of sense back then. People don't understand how much Jewish hatred was around the world. In fact, in this area, there was the least one of the least Jewish hatreds. Like th this was pretty friendly to Jews at that time, relative to Europe and Russia. So, and also, the history of that place made it a lot more politically feasible to be able to get funding to go to that place. Right. And also, uh, there wasn't a country there. You didn't have a country there. So if you want to make a country, you have to do it in a place where you don't have a country. It made complete sense. And also, there was a lot of empty land. There was a lot of empty land where people were not um, living there. It made complete sense that why they chose. I used to think, like, why did they pick a place where they're surrounded by so many enemies? But now when I go re read the history of it, it made complete sense. But yeah, let's go listen to the other comments. Yeah, I'm just so deeply black pilled on this that. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. Um, Ellis four twenty stoner gave us a super chat. Thank you, saying I just want to say that the closest I'll ever come to supporting Israel is my friend in the IDF reserves. I just want him safe and the war to stop. Yeah, I can totally appreciate that. I can really appreciate that. Um, I hope your friend is safe. Yeah. Um, Benny Wolf gave us a super chat. Thank you, Benny, saying, grew up as a pastor's kid in evangelical Christianity, and Israel was such a huge part of the narrative heard at the t all the time, complete with forms with messianic Jews. It made me so uncomfortable. Mm. Yeah. Um, and we got a few more interesting comments. Arjun is saying, Armin and Suzanne, are you aware that of the fact that Pakistanis are kicking out Afghan refugees? Oh, yeah. Yes, I am. They are kicking out roughly the same amount of Afghan refugees as the entire entire population of Gaza, roughly equivalent. Yeah. Do you hear so anyone talking about that? Do you hear anyone no. talking about that? Do you hear anyone no. talking about ethnic cleansing? Yeah. Do you hear right. anyone talking I mean, they, about ethnic cleansing, displacement? I mean, they're no. Muslim. They're they're. I, I, last time I checked, aren't they? Uh, I think they're Muslim. Some of these Afghan no. refugees have been living there for generations. Yeah, so how come if these people I mean, are they are they Hindu, Muslim? You know, maybe they're yeah. atheists. No, they're they're Muslim, right? So if they're Muslim, but I'm kidding. I'm just saying, given that they're Muslim, and and they're being kicked out, how come the Muslim world, who pretends that they the reason why they care caring for Palestinians, you know, is that they're Muslim and they're being wronged and oppressed? How come, you know, if it's Muslim on Muslim? It, that's a problem. Oh, I see what's the problem. Pakistan is kicking out Afghans and they are Muslims, but the reason why the Muslim world doesn't seem to care as much is because it's happening by other Muslims. The if Pakistanis, they should have been Jews, Christians, or atheists. No, not even atheists. They should have been Jews. That's the crime here. The, the reason why the Muslim world doesn't care about Afghans is because what the 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 people who's doing this to them is, are are Muslims themselves. This is the same reason why Muslims do not worldwide don't care much about Yemenis and what happened to them because because the the, the governments that did that to them were also Muslim. 
Yeah, so it's not a threat yeah. to maintaining an Islamic land. Right, right. So if you're a Muslim and you're being wrong, make sure you're being wrong by a Jew or else the other Muslims are not going to come and protect you and help you and care about you. Or China. No, not, no, not even China. I mean, do you see the same level of reaction to you you know to the you don't see that no you you see you see some more outrage no. yeah it's more more but than more, more than what's yeah. happening to afghans 100 percent, but still yeah but relative infinitely, to infinitely infinitely less than what's happening in palestine palestine yeah so yeah even if it's china atheist no it has to be the jews if you want to get maximum support make sure you're being wronged wronged by the jews yeah um havoc is saying here in lebanon palestinians hide their accents when they're trying to negotiate a price because they don't want to get they because they know they won't get anywhere with a palestinian accent exactly and mm -hmm. zaid following up said palestinians in lebanon live as second class citizens even those who were born in lebanon and never knew palestine okay. exactly i think that's a really important I part of this conversation that's very conveniently ignored. And also another another way to show to the world that this is more about um, Jew hatred, anti-Jewish hatred, anti-Semitic views than about caring for Palestinian is everybody talks about how Gaza is surrounded. Um, it's in a blockade. Uh, and they always talk about the part of the border that has been blocked by Israel but they rarely talk about the part that is blocked by Egypt. Yeah, Egypt right? is so actively this... fortifying the Rafah crossing. Right. So, again, why is it that people keep condemning Israel for blocking Gazans in and they rarely talk about Egypt because e Egyptians are not Jews? It's because, because it doesn't serve your anti-Jewish narrative. That's what it is. Yeah, and the CC has already come forward and been like, uh, no, we're not letting people come here in mass. Yeah. And, um, or, and, and Jordan as well. Yeah. Kenny has gifted five Atheist Republic memberships. Thank you so much, Kenny. That's so nice. If you just got an Atheist Republic membership, make sure to drop the emojis in the chat. And Unicorn said, Jews cannot be the only race to not exist with autonomy in their own indigenous homeland. Talking about sending them elsewhere is just not okay. First of all, I just want to say I absolutely hate arguments on the basis of indigeneity in 90% of the time. 90% of the time. it's a, I think it's a trash argument. Because you can just always argue about who came first. Why it's not useful. It's not helpful. I do Except not necessarily. Jews, I, I don't think that arguing from this, the because of your ethnicity, you're inherently owed something. Uh, I hate that line of thinking. I hate that argument. I think if extended to its absurd degree, it's very dangerous. But I just want to clarify and say that, like, I just want the Jewish people to be safe somewhere. God damn it. Right. Because they're not safe pretty much anywhere. And so it's just me talking and thinking out loud, being like, God damn it, where can they go? Because <laughs> this is fucked. <laughs> I'm not trying. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't think it's I, a real. I think it would be an unrealistic and a legal thing to happen now. I'm just speaking hypothetically, you know, back in the yeah. day would, you know, I wish we could have had nicer things, but we can't have nice things. What we get is suffering. I'm what we get now is suffering and we will get suffering because what no one is going to tell you is that there is no solution. There is no solution. That's what no one is willing to say. There is no solution. So we get suffering and I'm frustrated about it. So I'm saying like, what if theoretically back in the, back in the day, there was an opportunity for us to not just get suffering I don't Otherwise, know if I'm making sense, but I'm just trying to express a frustration. If the if after the Six Day War, Israel just gave the West Bank to Jordan, I think a lot of this would have been solved. So that mm -hmm. was, I think, the opportunity. I think that was Israel's worst decision. Um, but I I I'm against countries based on ethnicities unless there's a worldwide hate 
and oppression of your ethnicity. So I don't think ethnicity is anything that is, is, is important at all. Uh, but if your enemies are making your ethnicity important and using it as a way to target you, unfortunately, we have to make it important, not because we want to, but because we are being made to. You know what I mean? So I, I don't like countries that are based on ethnicities, but Israel had no choice to be based on ethnicity because the worldwide attack of people, you know, Oops. so that that that's that there's that and also i know there's no solution to no suffering but if we redefine solution to the least suffering there is always a solution right because I, I, yeah there will be suffering there will be a lot of pain to come but we have to between all the horrible choices what we have to evaluate is which one is the least horrible not that it's not horrible but it's the least horrible that's what that's what the challenge here is yeah um just to clarify again, unicorn is saying, I live on tribal land that non natives are not allowed to own. White people in America don't have a problem with this today in modern times. Indigenous rights to autonomy matter. That's why I said in 90% of cases, I'm not going to be totalistic or absolutist in that. But in general, I think it's a line of thinking that can be taken to an extreme that is very dangerous. Do you know who makes the most amazing, gorgeous, and other adjectives that I can't use here on YouTube? Blasphemous art ever? We do. And for some reason, we are giving it away for free. Download them now using the link in the description before we change our mind.